The press has buried this and it is huge news. Hi, this is Mike Maloney and I'm joined by Adam Taggart again. Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. Happy New Year. And a happy new year to you. I hope that this year uh, starts us back on a track that repairs the damage, the societal damage over the past couple of years. We have seen uh, horrific things happen in society all over the planet. And it's, uh, you know, things are, have been going in a very bad direction, in my opinion. Uh, the stock markets keep on going up. Currency supply keeps on going up. <laughs> but freedom and uh, the ability to express one's own opinion uh, is headed south big time. Uh, what do you think? Well, a absolutely. And uh, from your lips to God's ears in terms of uh, us seeing better times ahead. But we got a lot of great information to dive into here. And uh, sadly, it just sort of shows like uh, business as usual is continuing on that end. Um, so folks, stick around. We got a lot of great information here, particularly a great meme of the day at the end of this video. But uh, the first article, uh, Mike, is, um, is one that you highlighted here about a news blackout um, about... Um, basically the Fed keeping mum on some of the banks that it helped out. Um, what's going on here? Uh, well, first of all, uh, this is from Pam Martins and Russ Martins of wallstreetonparade.com. And I would suggest that everybody goes that go there and read their website. And uh, there is a, a column on the left hand side uh, that you can just click on, go back four or five articles and then just uh, read them and click and go to so that you're uh, doing them in the order that they were written. Uh, they are probably uh, the best investigative reporters in the financial space now in the world. I mean, they are doing one bang up job of, uh, of uncovering things. And then they're good at fundamental math addition. One plus one equals two. This plus this must equal this, and uh, they do it very well. But this article that uh, that we were looking at here is on Reddit, and it's posted by somebody else. Their website got completely over overwhelmed when the Reddit crowd found out a couple of things about how the banks and the Federal Reserve works. And uh, Pam and Russ explained it very well. And uh, all of these Reddit people uh, went to their website and basically their server was overwhelmed. And so uh, their website was running very slowly. But uh, what they're finding here is that Wall Street on Parade has been banned from uh, Reddit, it looks like. The Reddit administrators have uh, banned the best reporters. Their article was about how there appears to be some sort of gag order uh, on all of the big financial news media outlets, like Bloomberg, for instance. Uh, there's reporters that have been following things for years, uh, and then they just stopped. Uh, they, with the, uh, the short-term repo loans that happened back in uh, 2019, that I was reporting on, but I didn't dig as deep as uh, Pam and Russ have. Uh, I was showing the graphs and questioning, why is this happening? What is the emergency? Uh, Because it, it was huge. The amount of currency creation that was created through these short-term loans uh, in, in repurchase agreements uh, was immense. And <clears throat> you know, the list of banks was just disclosed four or five days ago. And, uh, and the press, except for Wall Street on Parade here, uh, Pam and Russ, the press has buried this. And it is huge news. Uh, what banks were in trouble? What, what banks were insolvent? Why was uh, JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup just lining up and taking billions and billions and billions of dollars day after day after day? What was going wrong? Uh, with their balance sheets. Uh, so, uh, and, and it's all been suppressed. It's amazing that this can get suppressed. And then when somebody reports on it, <laughs> they get, you know, they, they get banned from Reddit. And, and uh, we're seeing 
this across all social media platforms that are centralized, that are run by somebody. They are telling that today, uh, this, the social media gurus are trying to tell us what to think and how to think. That bothers me. What's your take? Well, yeah. So a couple of things. So yeah, you and I were both looking at 2019 at those repo um, loans that were going out and how they had just exploded. And, you know, I think we noticed, look, that that's not normal. Something's going on beneath the surface right. and yet yeah. we weren't being told. And as you said, it, it was a lot of money. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, billions of dollars uh, every night, but in total, it was like over four and a half trillion dollars that was loaned out. And you just mentioned the, the three biggest banks that were the biggest beneficiaries of those loans. And it's like, we're not even able to question this, right? You said that the people that are digging around and actually trying to do old school gumshoe reporting on this are getting silenced, right? And that's a big issue. Um, we've got some other uh, sort of examples of, of, you know, the muzzling of, of, the narrative or maybe even truth uh, in this case, which we'll get to in a second. But, you know, Mike, I know you want to do um, uh, one of these videos uh, on some you know iconic movies, but this one just reminds me so much of 1984, where, you know, Winston Smith, the main protagonist you know, at the beginning of the novel, uh, his job was working for the records department in basically rewriting historical news, you know, basically sort of whitewashing what happened in the past. And this is sort of a version of that, right? It's, it's a gaslighting of the truth. You're just not reporting on what's going on out there. So I, I think it's very concerning. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I've uh, said over and over is whenever there is censorship, uh, you have to look at the motives of the censorers. You, if the, whoever is being censored is almost always uh, saying something that is very uncomfortable for the censorers. Uh, it's the, what we are seeing going on today is the same stuff that happened in the USSR. Uh, it, you know, it still happens in Russia and China, uh, North Korea especially, uh, and uh, Nazi Germany. Uh, it, this is, uh, and it's, it's one of the ways that they control and brainwash the masses. Uh, and it's, it's a shame. So you really have to be on your guard whenever you're seeing uh, some censorship going on. It means that, that somebody is up to something when there can't be legitimate, like, you know, legitimate scientific debate is something that has not been allowed uh, since 2020. Uh, this decade, this whole decade so far is just an absolute disaster for freedom and for humanity in general. So uh, let's move on to the next article here. Um, we've got uh, Dimitri Kofinas, who is a friend of mine. Uh, he tweeted that uh, we all know that Joe Rogan is more popular than any other news program or organization. But to see it this way is jaw dropping. And it's a chart of, uh, you know, it's views, average views per million, or millions, millions of views, I'm sorry, not per million. And um, I mean, he's blowing away. If you add all the rest of these top shows, Tucker Carlson, The Five, Hannity, and so on together, uh, they probably add up to about, <laughs> maybe a little bit more than Joe Rogan, but I mean, he's he's controlling an, uh, an enormous, and, it's because uh, he won't allow himself to be censored. Uh, it's interesting, this exodus from the mass media, mainstream media, toward alternative ways of getting, when you can't get the truth from the officials and the experts, you have to search elsewhere. And we're finally seeing people do that, and it's wonderful. Yeah, I sort of see this as almost like Gresham's Law for Information, right? Wow. Uh, Gresham's Law, for those who are familiar with it, is that basically bad money chases out good money, where uh, when people realize that a currency is being debased, uh, they go and hold on to truer forms of currency. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, you know, I think people are finding it hard to get good quality information that they know is, is authentic and not being scrubbed by some corporate or government interest. And, you know, that's why you're seeing 
a lot of the major news networks have their lowest ratings in, in forever. Um, and we're seeing this sort of mass exodus that you just mentioned, Mike, of people seeking what they consider to be more truthful or at least more authentic uh, information elsewhere. Um, and you know, thank goodness that we've got a guy like Joe Rogan out there um, just because regardless of whether you like him or not, it's shining a big bright light on this problem. Um, and hopefully as more and more people wake up, um, you know, a alternative sources of better information will thrive, but also maybe it sends a signal to the folks um, that are controlling the information flow on the mainstream side is that that strategy doesn't work and maybe it'll economically force them to reconsider their actions. I certainly hope so, because I do believe that this is backfiring on all of the uh, big tech social media companies. Uh, so, you know, one of the things about uh, the Joe Rogan thing, it's, it's, it's growing, but one of the most popular uh, podcasts that he's had lately or videos uh, is uh, with Dr. Robert Malone, uh, one of the inventors of mRNA technology for vaccines. Uh, and uh, it's interesting, you know, he, he did this, uh, I don't know, I haven't watched the interview yet. It's three hours long. I'm going to watch it. Uh, but what we've uh, got here is um, he, his Twitter account was suspended. I don't know if it was just before the uh, interview or if it was a result of the interview, but they took his Twitter account away from him on, it looks like December 29th here is when somebody tweeted that his uh, Twitter account uh, was now gone. Uh, and it's just the memory hole from 1984, you know, uh, you and Jeff and I watched a whole bunch of movies because we wanted to do a movie review on subjects that sort of parallel uh, what has been happening. You know, uh, and we've, we, I, I watched a lot of different films. Uh, and, uh, and so I think we should do that sometime because we are seeing the memory hole in action. We are, uh, and we're not just seeing it in Twitter, we're seeing it across all sorts of different uh, social media channels and, and regular media channels, as you just talked about earlier. Um, in fact, the, the Malone uh, interview on Joe Rogan was removed from YouTube within a couple hours of its original release. Um, so that particular interview you know, got whacked across a lot of different platforms. Um, what I find really interesting too is uh, last over the past week as well, we've seen two other sort of prominent uh, people get deplatformed as well. Um, one was Marjorie Taylor Greene, and one is Naomi Wolf. And what I think is so interesting about those two is they're like on opposite ends of the ideological spectrum. Um, it'd be hard pressed to find two people that have sort of you know more different and radical worldviews, um, and yet they're both getting deplatformed here. And the notable takeaway from that, I think, is that, you know, the people that are driving the censorship, um, they, they don't really care what your ideology is. It's, it's just as long as if it's not theirs, if it's contrary to the narrative that they're trying to push, uh, then you're fair game. And I think that is very concerning, uh, you know, anywhere, but certainly in a nation that prides itself on being a beacon of democracy, because that's sort of the antithesis of democracy. And as we were um, preparing to get on camera here, Mike, uh, Dan Rubach, uh, your producer, brought up a great point, which is <clears throat> um, this is something that the blockchain actually could be a really valuable weapon for truth in um, because uh, blockchain technology is decentralized, right? So it's really hard for any one particular interest to, you know, take it over and determine what can and can't happen on it. Yeah. Uh, and then secondly, uh, because it's decentralized, it, it's all about giving everybody the same visibility uh, at the same time uh, as to sort of what reality is, um, where, you know, every node is basically, um, uh, you know, fact checking uh, each transaction or everything that happens on it. So it's very, very hard for people to put out misinformation uh, in a blockchain based environment because everybody sort of already has the record of the truth. Yeah, distributed ledgers, uh, they can't be erased either. That's, you know, there's another copy somewhere. <laughs> right, exactly. The only way you can erase it is to get rid of that server. But all of the other servers are constantly basically checking each other and they have to agree or, or uh, you know, the one that doesn't agree with all the rest is basically out. Uh, so it's the reason things like Bitcoin work. So if, if you're viewing this, 
and you've been suspicious about things like Bitcoin or you're not interested in blockchain, you should get interested in not necessarily blockchain only, but distributed ledger technology. And the best way to do that is to probably start with our episode eight of Hidden Secrets of Money that takes a very deep dive into the subject because it's one of the things that will bring back our freedom. Great point, Mike. Well, a few things uh, I want to get to that sort of tie into that. Real quickly, though, folks, uh, if you haven't already done so yet, hit the like button and then subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button below if you haven't already. Um, all right, Mike, there's a great chart here that was put out by Jim Bianco and the team at, at Bianco Research um, that, uh, well, it, it's called the Omicron effect. But um, since you pulled it up, let, I'll, I'll hand the football back to you and let you kind of tell folks why this data is so interesting. Uh, I was just bowled over by it. Uh, the first chart is the percentage of city office space currently in use. And it was up at like 99%. There was in uh, one city, I think that's uh, Austin, uh, it was actually over 100% uh, just when this started somehow. I don't know how that can be, but uh, th that's what the chart shows. And uh, it starts in on January 8th, 2020. And then you see the pandemic start and it plunges. And there are some cities that dropped to like 5%. It's just absolutely amazing. But uh, with Om Omicron, it has uh, done the same thing again. It was uh, you know, ranging from like 28% to about 58% capacity. And then suddenly it has plunged and uh, ranges from uh, 10.6% up to 26%. So it's plunged by 50%. I mean, it's, it's just, it's huge. Uh, the national average is the dark black line. And um, so it just shows how disconnected the stock market and the whole financial industry seems to be from the real economy. Look at what is happening to commercial office space uh, and the uh, people that own the properties. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of companies not renewing leases. Uh, this is an absolute disaster. Uh, any comments on that one? Yeah, ab absolutely. And uh, I just want to put up here too, there's a chart that you would, um, uh, sort of a sister chart to this that you yeah. put up of, of New York subway turnstile entries, which shows basically the same thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, just another it shows it's even more dramatic, averaging somewhere around uh, 4.75 million uh, turnstile entries on a daily basis, I believe this is. And then uh, with the pandemic plunging down to 380,000. <laughs> Unbelievable. It had rebounded up to uh, uh, 200. 2,350,000, you know, trying to get back up to the close to 5 million level. So, uh, you know, almost halfway. And then Omicron comes and it fell down to uh, 1,440,000. So just unbelievable data. And it just shows if this is happening in the real economy, how is it that the stock market just keeps on going up? It, 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 exactly. And look, some of these numbers are depressed because, you know, a lot more people are working from home right now. So, right. you know, there is some factor there that, hey, the workplace just shifted from commercial to, to people's homes. Although, of course, that doesn't help the commercial property owners at all. Um, but Still, exactly the amount point, of Mike, gasoline being sold, the amount of travel, the, there's a big hit on the economy when everybody decides to work from home, even though the work is getting done. <laughs> the office space isn't being rented. And so there's landlords taking enormous hits. And those landlords are probably invested somewhere other than just real estate. And so there's a trickle down effect that runs through the entire economy. Uh, oh, and absolutely. And, yeah. and I don't think the work from home factor makes up for the difference here. I think it just makes right. up for a portion of it, right? So overall economic activity is a lot more depressed than today's record stock market prices indicate. And, you know, Mike, you know, we just finished 2021. If you look at the NASDAQ, the average company listed in the NASDAQ is down, was down 20% uh, for 2021. That's a bear market. 
Um, yeah, right. it's only a few big still, companies that are carrying the whole stock market. Exactly. Yeah. The, the whole stock market right now is basically like five or six stocks and mostly those, those, those great big tech stock names that, that, mm -hmm. that we all know, right? So, you know, that is a huge risk going into to 2022 is people look at the headline number, they just look at where the S&P closed. Oh, we're at a record high, everything must be great. Well, no, it's not. If you look beneath the surface, you don't have to dig that much. And these charts are really great indicators of that. So the risk of 2022 is there being, you know, a, a reckoning moment where, you know, basically the world wakes up to the fact that the markets have basically just been rotted away and uh, you know the the veneer of health was just you know being um, painted by a, just a few companies, and if those companies get to the point uh, where they stumble, or even if they just can't keep growing the way that they've been growing, um, you know there's a huge air pocket below, as these types of numbers suggest. And, and by the way, you know the companies that uh, that have been driving the market so far have benefited tremendously from the trillions of dollars of stimulus. That have been pumped into the system over the past year and a half and that stimulus those stimulus spigots are being turned off now right i mean the right. fed is threatening to taper all the way to zero and then do three interest rate hikes and congress really can't seem to get another stimulus package passed so that could really be a huge game changer going forward and mike yeah. if it's okay i, I just want to let folks know um, if that topic is of interest to you that's going to be a main focus of the online conference that wealthy on is holding later this month on January 22nd. And very quickly, the amazing killer uh, roster of speakers there headlined by Jeff Clark, obviously of Gold Silver to talk about gold in the miners. But we're gonna have folks like Jim Grant, Jim Rickards, Luke Groman, Danielle DiMartino Booth, Rick Rule, Brent Johnson. We're gonna have crypto experts, experts on real estate and farmland. So if you're interested in any of that, just go to wealthion.com slash Jan. 2020. Dan, maybe you can put up a URL for that. And if folks go now, um, you can get the early bird discount price rate, which is 40%. In fact, it's more than 40% off uh, what the, the uh, main rate card is. Um, all right. So with, with that, Mike, I know we've got some great- um, You know, before features. we move on to the next thing- yeah, Jump in. Uh, I just want to say how this data of uh, office space and uh, the subway turnstile entries uh, reflects on the opening article. Uh, there was a liquidity crisis. There was something wrong with the big banks' balance sheets, and nothing major had gone wrong back in October of 2019. Uh, you know, out in the general economy, it was confined inside the banking sector. We still don't know what it is. They're keeping it a secret, but something was happening that required four and a half trillion dollars worth of currency creation. That is something that, if it had gone along with some major economic crisis that was out in the public could bring down the world economy. Everything freezes up. Uh, I now, you know, try to uh, keep some cash available, even though cash is losing value at a rate of about six to 10% per year right now. Having some cash on the side uh, is probably a good thing right now because once the bank banking system freezes up, everything freezes up. So, yeah, absolutely. And I'll just say that that Jim Rickards uh, agrees with you, as does Grant Williams. I interviewed both of them in the past uh, two weeks or so, and they both said the optionality value of cash right now is extremely high given that risk. And of course, the question that gets raised by your point there, Mike, is did they merely just kick the can of this economic seizure from 2019 to a future date? And if they did, is that date right. going to be this year? Well, they keep on, they're kicking it from uh, 2008. You know, this is, yeah, exactly. that's the reason they haven't been able to stop QE. They still have, every time they try to taper or, or reduce their balance sheet, it triggers a crisis. And so they can't stop now until the whole thing comes tumbling down. Absolutely. All right. Well, as we wrap up here, let's get to the feedback here from Ramon Tiscar. I'll let you read it, Mike, but it was a great point. Ian. I've been living in Argentina for many years during the latest inflation period, and the populist government blamed companies, meat companies, supermarkets, etc. The whole private sector was supposedly responsible for the inflation. <laughs> this is I, I just history 
over and over, you know, and then he says, I've seen this movie before. I know exactly uh, what's coming next. And uh, that is so true. This is like, um, you know, watching some bad horror <laughs> movie over and over and over again. <laughs> you just, you know what's coming. Uh, this has never worked and, uh, and the government causes it and then blames everybody else, the politicians and the people at the central banks. Uh, they cause it and then they try and find some sort of scapegoat. And, you know, it's interesting if you go back to Wall Street on parade, uh, Pam Martins and Russ Martins, uh, they really have been exposing how corrupt the entire banking and financial industry is. And when there is a big crash, they're going to end up with all of your cookies. Good point. I, I love your analogy there about the, the horror movie. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, the umpteenth sequel to you know the the horror movie that everybody knows how it ends it's like friday the 13th part like 57 um and you know we're watching the latest version of that play out in real time in turkey right now i mean we don't have to look any further than the, the today's headlines on what's going on there and erdogan is blaming everybody but himself uh -huh. for the currency debasement that's going on there <laughs> it's amazing and that what's really amazing is the average person that isn't keeping themselves up to date on this stuff by doing things like watching these videos, reading books, uh, you know, you've got to follow a certain sector of uh, analysts and commentators to be able to actually know what's going on. Uh, they'll actually believe the government narrative that it was, oh, it was those meat producers. Uh, it's their fault that meat costs more, <laughs> not the fault that the Federal Reserve diluted the currency supply, making the purchasing power of, I mean, <laughs> the purchasing power of the US dollar since the Federal Reserve was created has dropped by about 98%. There's not much left. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's so crazy, but. But there, there, so let's end here with this great meme uh, that you selected here, which I think makes this point in spades. So this is a very common parlor game. It's called Uno. Um, but basically, you're trying to get rid of all your cards. That's the objective of the game. And uh, in this case, uh, somebody draws a card that says, admit your bad policies caused inflation or draw 25 cards. And so it says, what do politicians do when faced with this? Well, they go and draw those 25 cards. <laughs> They'll do anything, anything, no matter how risky, uh, right. as long as they don't have to admit their culpability. It should say, or create 25 tri trillion. <laughs> you know, that's what's coming next. So in the next big crisis. So, okay. I want to thank you so much uh, for joining me here. This has been a great oh. conversation. Always and, a pleasure, Mike. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. And thank everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening.